Hey there, Mr. Weaver here, and this is 8th grade, Module 5, Lesson 4, Compare Functions. After this lesson, you need to be able to compare functions that are represented in different ways using their initial values and rates of change. Let's learn. Compare functions. Functions can be represented by a table, graph, equation, or words. You can compare two functions represented in different forms by comparing the rates of change and their initial values. Functions can be compared to determine which is increasing or decreasing at a faster or slower rate, and to determine which function has a greater value for a given input. This could be your initial value, or it could be a value later on in the function. Here we have two functions given, one in a table and one in a graph. The function in the table has a rate of change of four. We can see that it continues to go up four for each one more on the input, so this has a rate of change of four. Where in the graph, we can see it has a rate of change of one half. It goes up one every two units over. So our rise over our run would be one over two. Our rate of change is one half. So we can compare these and say that the table has a faster rate of change. It is four compared to half. Example one, compare two functions. The function m equals 140h, where m is the miles traveled in h hours, represents the distance traveled by the first Japanese high-speed train. The distance traveled by a high-speed train operating in China is shown in the table. Assume each relationship is linear. Compare the function's initial values and rates of change, then determine how much farther the Chinese train will travel than the Japanese train, if you ride each train for five hours. In the words, we were told that the Japanese train had an equation of m equals 140h. We want to know first, in part a, their initial values. So the way this is written, pretty much in slope-intercept form, we can have y equals mx plus b. Here we're given the y, it's just a different letter, something, and then another variable, there's your mx part. This is your rate of change. We want to know the initial value though, that's your y-intercept. There is nothing at the end of the equation here, so this means that the initial value is zero. If we check in the table, going back, what is it at zero? Well, each time this is going up to 17. So if we were to go back one hour, it would also be 217 less. So zero would be with zero. No distance has been covered. That makes sense. The train hasn't started yet. So the initial value for each would be zero. Within the function, we can see our rate of change for the Japanese train is 140. There's your slope or rate of change. And for the Chinese train, it is going up 217 miles each hour. So there's your rate of change. So if we were comparing this function, we could say that the initial values are the same, but the rate of change for the Chinese train is greater than the Japanese rate of change. Next, how much farther will the Chinese train travel than the Japanese train? It asks us to find it after five hours. So let's figure out five in both of the different functions. So if we substitute five into our Japanese train's equation, 140 times 5 would be 700. So after 5 hours, the miles is 700. For the Chinese train, we can just keep following the pattern. Each time it was going up to 17. So if we continue that, the next time 217 goes, it's at 868. And then again at 1085, there's our 5 hour mark. How much farther is that Chinese train now? We can subtract 185 minus 700, 385 miles. So after five hours, the Chinese train would travel 385 miles farther than the Japanese train. Check your understanding. Suppose you want to decide which movie streaming service you should join. Company A charges $1.50 per movie with a startup fee of $5. The cost to stream movies from company B is shown in the table. Based on this, answer both parts, compare their initial values and rates of change, and how much more would company B cost than A if 15 movies were rented in a month? Pause the video now and complete the check.
Check your answer. First, company A has an initial value of five. There's your startup fee, that's your initial value. While company B has an initial value of four. If we go back, this is going two, two, so the next one back would be our zero. Down four, down four, so down four again. Our initial value would be four. So based on their initial values, company A had a higher startup cost or higher initial value. But our rate of change, company A is $1.50 per movie. Here, be careful, it's not $4 per movie, it's $4 for two movies. So if $4 was two movies, then it's $2 for one movie. So company A, $1.50, company B is $2, so B has a greater rate of change. How much more would B cost than A if each rents 15 movies? So for A, we can do $1.50 times 15, and then plus that $5 initial fee. So 15 times 15 is 225. So 15 times $1.50 would be 22.50. Plus five more. Company A is gonna cost $27 and 50 cents in one month if they rent 15 movies. For company B, if we continue on in our table, so eight, add four more dollars, 20. 10, add four more dollars, 24. 12, add four more dollars, we end up with 28. 14, add four more dollars, 32. We want 15, so one more is two dollars, so 34. That's our price for B. Finally, how much more that is? 34 minus 27.50, and we get our $6.50. Example two, compare two functions. Angela and Benjamin each have a monthly cell phone bill. Angela's monthly cell phone bill costs 15 cents per minute, plus an initial fee of $49. Benjamin's monthly cost is shown in the graph. Compare the function's initial values and rates of change, then determine the monthly cost for Angela and Benjamin for 200 minutes. So from the words, it told us Angela's monthly cell phone bill was 15 cents per minute with an initial fee of $49. If we were writing this in an equation, we could have our equation y equals 15 cents per minute with an initial fee of $49. I'm gonna write it like this. That way, later when we wanna know how much it is for 200 minutes, we can just substitute 200 in for X and solve for the total cost, which is Y. So first, in part A, let's compare our initial values and rates of change. It told us the initial value for Angela's bill was $49. If we're trying to find the same thing for Benjamin's bill, the initial value is the same as the Y-intercept, so where does it cross the Y-axis, or when there's zero minutes. So zero minutes had $60. Benjamin has the greatest initial cost. Now for the rate of change, how much is it per minute? Angela's is 15 cents per minute. For Benjamin's, the rate of change is the slope of the line. So what's our rise compared to our run? From 72 to 80, our rise was eight. From 120 to 200, that run was 80. So rise divided by run, eight divided by 80 would reduce to one tenth, which in terms of money, one tenth is 10 cents. So the rate of change for Benjamin is 10 cents. This would mean Angela is paying more per minute. She pays five cents more each minute. Now let's determine the monthly cost for 200 minutes. So for Angela, she's gonna pay that 15 cents per minute for 200 minutes and still add her $49 initial fee. 200 times 15 cents would come out to be $30 plus 49, so $79 would be Angela's bill at 200 minutes. If we use the graph for 200 minutes, I can look down here, I see that 200 is on a line. I can go up. Thankfully, 
they gave us a point. At 200 minutes, the cost was $80. So after 200 minutes, Benjamin still ends up paying only $1 more than Angela did. Had 200 minutes not been on the graph, we could have quickly wrote an equation for Benjamin. We just found his rate of change was 10 cents. And we can see the y-intercept here was plus 60. So then we could have just substituted in 200 for our minutes and calculated it out. 200 times 10 cents is $20 plus 60 is our 80. So if it happened to be in the middle and they didn't give us that point, we could have quickly wrote an equation to help us figure it out. So writing an equation is going to be an important skill because they're not always going to ask you something that comes out nicely or something that's shown in the graph. Check your understanding, read through the situation, and answer both parts. Pause the video now and complete this check. Check your answer. First, which company has the greater initial value? That would be Clearwater Canoes. River Run is $10 for the initial fee. On our graph, Clearwater Canoes has an initial fee of 16. For B, to determine the cost, if you want a canoe for four hours. So I'm going to do the graph first. Four hours up to the graph costs a total of 24. Four hours for River Run, it's $10 and $10 per hour. So for four, we have 40 plus 10 more is 50. So River Run canoes would be a lot more expensive after four hours. And in fact, even if you just go for one hour, I can see that Clearwater Canoes might be around 18. So that would be pretty much our better choice, no matter how much time they choose.